Do you have problem rolling dice? Do they sometimes fall off the table? Or God forbid, into somebody else's models? Nice. So here's how I made this dice box for my friend Stefan at One Last Blade. The first step is these 3D printed corners and a wall decor box. I'm gonna go ahead and fit these and I'm gonna go ahead and test fit and kind of sketch out where this button is gonna go. I'm gonna put a button on two of these corners and we'll get to that later. So I need to chisel these out. And then I finished with my Proxon rotary tool. Then I carved a channel for the wires to come through that's gonna be covered up by the 3D printed corners that I have. So it's time for a test fit to make sure everything fits right. And then we move on to staining. Now the center of this is gonna have a mouse pad that I've printed out with the logo on it. So I'm not too worried about staining the center. So I'm gonna actually tape a cup into the middle here. And once this is all taped up, I'll be able to actually put stain on the whole thing in one go and have a cup to hold and then it can dry sitting on the cup. Really nothing too special about the staining process. It's just some simple old Minwax and get a nice even coat on this thing all the way around. I do wanna make sure I get the inside edge here cause that will be visible. And you wanna make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area. This stuff is not the greatest thing in the world to breathe in. And once we have this whole thing coated and looking good, I'm just gonna let it sit on this cup here for a couple days and make sure it's completely dry before I do anything else with it. And that'll bring us to our 3D printed parts. 3D printed parts are great, but if you put some work into them, they get a lot better. So there's some 3D printing lines you can see on these. These ones are actually pretty well done, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand these completely flat and then put a filler primer on them so you won't be able to see that they're 3D printed at all. So I'm going to start with 320 grit, and I suggest you go a little slower than this looks. You will actually melt the filament, and then you have melted plastic to deal with, and then you have even more work for yourself. For the tricky corners, I'm going to use a emery board here and just polish off. I get these at the beauty supply store. I love these for any little sanding projects for my models. And then for the final rounded corners, I use my rotary tool again. Now, when you're doing 3D printed parts, you want to have very light touch, otherwise you'll melt the plastic. And that'll bring us to the priming step. Now I'm using this filling primer. The important thing is you want something that is sandable. And here we go. I taped them some painting sticks and I put a few light coats of this on here. And now it's time to polish these off and give these a sand after the primer is all dry. So I'm going to come at these with a finer grit emery board here just to get in through here and make sure that all of the inside edges are nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna take an 800 grit piece of sandpaper to get all the flat edges all nice and flat and smooth and ready to go. Next up, gold paint. Using this Krylon spray paint for durability. Did you forget about that box that we stained like a week ago? I totally didn't. So we're gonna rip the cup off the back of this and that's pretty much the looks of the box done. I'm gonna pull out the corners that I've made now that they're all nice and gold and that's looking pretty good. So at this point, I'm getting ahead of myself and seeing how I'm gonna glue these on and then I pretty much immediately realized that I'm gonna need to finish up these buttons first. So first I'm gonna need to strip some wires. This is just some 24 gauge magnet wire, which is, to be fair, complete overkill for this project. Here's a link to my soldering video if you need to learn about that. Once all the buttons are soldered, it is epoxy time. I'm gonna use the two ton here to give me a little bit more working time on this. So as you can see, I get the button set and then I run the wire down the channel and then comes the corner that's gonna go over top of this, get a nice bit of epoxy on the inside and then I'm rubber banding this into place to give everything enough time to dry. Once I have all four of the legs on, it's time to test to make sure that these are all the same length. It gets a bit more difficult when the glue is dry to change that. And once this is all dry, it's time to add the brains to this operation here. This is an Adafruit soundboard with amp. This is a complete package. You don't need an Arduino or anything to drive it. You just plug in some buttons to press, like we've already put in place. Plug in a speaker, we'll get to that. And download some sound files, and we'll also get to that. So on this board, you have pins 0 to 10 that are triggers, which gives you 11 different sound triggers if you want. You have your speaker out left and right. We're only gonna use one in this project. And then you have your voltage and your ground. And that's all you really need to know about that. If you really need to know about this board, Adafruit has amazing documentation and support and you can always contact them. 
So here I've made a little plastic card offset that's going to go underneath the board so I can still solder through to any of the pins, but it'll also allow me to plug into the USB port so I can have this programmable after everything's all glued in place. So I've attached this to the back with some sticky wax. I'm just going to put some sticky wax on the back of the plastic card and then attach this whole thing to the box. This will get epoxied on later. And that brings us to layout. Now I have to figure out where every other piece of this is going to fit. Once I've figured out where all of the pieces need to fit, I'm going to actually cut a hole for this speaker and set the speaker back into this wood so it has a little bit more space to project its sound before it hits the table. So you may be wondering, how did I actually cut this hole out? Well, the wrong way. I cut it out the wrong way. So I'm not even going to show you how I did it, because you should do it better. And now that we have a giant hole in the box, I'm going to cover it up with a piece of HDPE. This is just a sheet of plastic you can get from pretty much any hobby store. And we're just going to put it in the bottom to give a nice, flat rolling surface to go uh, underneath the mouse pad. That brings us to some assembly. I've used some rubber O-rings as some shims to stand off the speaker to get a nice flat surface here on the other side. Mostly just because I had the rubber O-rings lying around and it seemed like a good use. On to soldering. So the key points here is the buttons both need to get soldered to the ground. There are multiple ground pins that you can use, but the pins will trigger off going to ground. So one of the wires from each button needs to go to ground, and the other wires I'm going to solder to pins 1 and 2 because those are the two trigger pins that I've decided to use for the two different sound triggers. And that'll bring us to the speaker. Now the speaker, because I'm only using one, can go either to the left or to the right side pins, but you want to make sure that both are on the same side. So you want positive and negative on the left or positive and negative on the right not positive on the left and negative on the right. That would be bad. And that brings us to power. This thing's not going to do very well with no power. I went with a battery pack here that has three AAAs to make it easy for Stefan to go ahead and change the batteries out without having to worry about any crazy requirements for rechargeable batteries or any other complications. I also put a ribbon in here that's going to go underneath the batteries so they can pull out nice and easily for him and just make it easily maintained. So here it is all soldered up. I have my audio, trigger pins, and power in. And after being manhandled and banged around a bit, it's time to touch these little corners up. Now, little known fact, if you have a spray paint can and you need to repaint and do some touch-ups, you can actually spray that can into a paper cup and then use a brush to paint with that. And that's what I'm doing here, just touching them up and making them all look good. So now we're in final stages here. I'm actually gonna use some two-part epoxy resin here. And I'm gonna coat all of the wires and put it over the circuit board to make sure that none of this can get knocked out of place while it's getting tossed around or played with on the board. I'm also gonna come in on top of the screws on the switch. I only actually got one screw in on that switch there. So I'm gonna just fill epoxy in in the other screw hole. You do wanna be careful to not get any epoxy into the switch because it will stop working at that point. And once all of that's taken care of, I flipped it over and I went ahead and used that mixed up epoxy that I have and finished off the little sheet here of HDPE just to get that solidified in place. And with the box coming to completion, it's time to do some sound effects. For the Emperor! Now is the time for sixes. Drive them back into the warp! So all the sounds on here are just done through Audacity and just recording straight into the mic. It's pretty simple work. The key here though, is you're gonna wanna save it as a WAV file or an OGG, technically either would work. Typically I just do WAV files for simplicity's sake. And then you need to save them as something specific. So all the sounds are laid out as T01, which is trigger one, next, which means it'll cycle through, indexing off of zero, so we have zero one and zero one two, and that just means each time you press the button, it will advance to the next sound. So now we plug the board into the USB, and it opens up just like a USB drive, already has a file on it right here. We're gonna highlight our files and drag them over into this effective USB drive, and you're done coding. That's all you have to do. Again, I'll leave a link to the Adafruit board in the description, 
and that'll send you to a whole learning section where it has way more information on exactly how these boards are programmed and what different things you could possibly do. And it's always a good idea to go ahead and hit the eject button just to make sure it's all done. Look what came in the mail. This is a custom printed mouse pad from Amazon. You can just order, put your own design in, and they'll ship it right to you. So I'm going to cut this down to size. If you want the corners to match all the way in, you're going to have to cut it down because of the rounded corners. And once it's all cut in, we just have to go ahead and do a test fit, make sure that I cut it the right size. It's always better to cut a little oversized and trim down. And you may be wondering what this other mouse pad upside down is. Well, if you want to see the other bit that I made for this, you're going to have to go to One Last Blade and check it out. I have a bunch of links in the description to everything that you're going to want to check out. And for this video, I'm going to leave you with Stefan's reaction. Oh, look at that! Oh, man! Where's the button? Well, there's a button! Now is the time for sixpence. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. I love this so much.